happy Cinco de Mayo, everybody. May 5th, 2020. Well, spraying's not going to work today because it's quite blustery out. So, uh, unhooked the sprayer, made a few phone calls, got dry fertilizer to spread. So, we're uh, in scooter, running up to the Andersons and Gibsonburg, and I'm going to get the dry fertilizer spread. Hopefully, I can get it all done today. Chance of rain, but it's supposed to say a few miles south of us, so hopefully it does. Hey, real keen on spraying right now, neither. It's low 40s outside. And then now they're talking uh, frost, possibly a freeze this coming Saturday into Sunday. Saturday night, 34, 34 degrees maybe. Could be lower. So that ain't good. Like I said, we're uh, me and Scooter just tootling down the highway. Let's go with that view. Wow, that fingered the screen again. So yep, we're just motoring along. Okay, guidance warming up. Everything's getting green. Almost to the point where you can't see through the woods anymore. Boop. Back to me. So, yeah. Alright. We'll talk to you in a few. Alrighty. Got her loaded. 22 acres worth. Head north out of town. And, uh, head over to the Woodville Farm and go by the Mall in Gibsonburg right now. We'll head over to the Woodville Farm and spread this one, come back, get another one for the Woodville Farm, go back, I got two loads to go to Dad's, and one to my house, so who knows, it might be another late day. We got, uh, look at this, we got white caps. Caps in the water out on the quarry. Yeah, it's, it's a little blustery out. So, all right, well, when we get to the field, I'll be back. Hope everybody's having a good day. Alrighty, well, we made it to the field. No major difficulties. Uh, 22-acre field right here. Just a little wet spot right there. That's why we're not doing much. Not getting too big of a hurry. But uh, yeah, so we'll pull in here and see if we can get the his field finder. 23. That's the one we want. New event. Create new. Oh, this will be. Man, I'm going to have to put this camera down for this. Back in a flash. All right. Got her all tuned in. What did I just do? Hmm. I touched something. There we go. Alright. Let's, uh, go over here. See if we can find that. Forty foot spread. That's awfully dang close there. need to be spreading it into the road ditch. Says none too 
too smooth out here. We'll strike a new line right about here. Alright, let me remember how to do this. Down, 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 down. Boom. Shift but don't save. Voila. Alright. PTO is engaged. See if I can reach my rope. Oh, got a finger in the... Pull that down. And, uh... Well, I guess for those that don't know, we can show you real quick. The PTO runs a jack shaft, comes to the back. So your PTO runs your, your springs only. Your fertilizer comes out on this web belt, drops in your spinners, Oh, there goes my paperwork. Hang on. So by pulling this lever right here, it engages this tire here against that ground drive. So it's ground drive for the belt, and then you've got different gearing options and stuff for that. And then you adjust the gate on the back. And that gate right there, you adjust there per the scale there which is also according to the weight of the product that you're using. So, there's a science behind it. Oh. But, uh, okay, so we're good to go. Close the window. Kind of cool out here. Get her up to ramming speed. 540 or close to it and engage the steering and we are spreading fertilizer I know the phone will never pick it up so Yep, this is it. I'm going to be doing this for, I don't know, probably six or seven hours. We'll check in from time to time. I think this gets a little smoother when we get out there a little farther. I hope so. But anyway, we'll, uh, well, we'll make a corner. I'm used to turning 60 foot yesterday, so turning 40 foot today is going to be a little getting used to. Take me a corner or two to get back at it. We'll uh, turn it around. Yep, here we go. Well, one thing is you don't pick it up and shut it off or anything like that. You just spread right around the corner. You don't want to get too far. Of course, a little fertilizer on the wheat wouldn't hurt nothing. Actually, yeah, we'll wheel her around. See how it's 10 foot too far. There we go. I really wish this little pedal down here, which is a throttle, that one right there, but I got the hand throttle set for, for uh, consistency. I know some tractors, this pedal down here is a de accelerator you push it, it'll actually slow the motor down. Now this one is a throttle, so if you push it, you go faster. But if it was a de-accelerator, then you could step on that, slow yourself down, make your turn and let off of it, and it would go back to your preset on your hand throttle. But this one don't do that, which is fine. So I got her set pretty good though, so Hate moving the throttle back and forth, I'm trying to get it right around the same engine speed, PTO speed, because if that varies from pass to pass, then your coverage could vary. So, maybe I'll just slip the clutch a little bit. There we go. I'm 
much better. This was uh, Teft last year after the wheat come off. The neighbors got some cattle. Well, you can see their barn over there. Cattle barn. And they didn't get everything planted due to the wetness. So they had to prevent plant acres. So, uh, sorry about that. Cut that off. And they had some prevent plant acres, so they didn't have all the silage and stuff they wanted. So, uh, they got a hold of us, and we made an arrangement. This was a wheat field. So, after the wheat come off, they come in and uh, actually put manure down, which was a bonus for us. And then uh, they planted tough grass in it. And then they cut that later on when it matured, or when it got to the stage where they wanted it. And uh, they cut that for silage. I guess they did that with quite a few people. So, all right. Well, talk to you later. All right. Load number two. Not quite as many acres you can. Yeah, I guess you can see it right there in the top. Load number two. Loaded. Heading back to the field. I think Dad's actually going to meet me over there. He might take over spreading, and I'm going to jump in the vertical till. I can't catch up with him. So, uh, I don't know about that. But the ground is hard on top. Like I said, we got a we gotta crust. I'm looking at some ground that some people have worked and it's awfully cloudy. They worked their little deep, brought up mud from underneath. So, that's why I want to take that, like I said, I want to take that vertical till and just maybe two inches deep, not much of an angle, just go like crazy and and uh, bust that crust up and let the machine do what it's supposed to do. Open the, open the crust up and bust all the clods up. So, uh, yeah. I'll check back in a little bit, get over there and see what's going on. Who knows? Like I said, I might be jumping ship and getting the other tractor. Bye. Alright, well, Dad met me over here. We had a little powwow. He's going home and going to get that vertical till greased up. Part of it's greased when we rebuilt them bearings a while back. Uh, he's going to get the tractor started, get it propping up in the air, get it finished getting it greased. By that time, I'll be done back up town, get a little fertilizer for his house, and uh, we'll. Uh, This feels rough too. Definitely gonna have to hit him with something. Like I said, that's why I want to get that vertical stuff on. There we go. This one ain't as bad as the other one, but it's rough. <coughs> but uh, yeah, so that's the plan. I've got. Uh, let me switch. Bang. Boom. Got this little. Oh, nine acre field. And then, uh, look for them cattails back in there. That's, we call that the rich field. There's uh, 11 acres back in there. Look at these two old trees. I hope you can see them good. Them things are pushing five foot on the stump. But they ain't worth nothing log-wise or anything like that because they're all branches, but they are huge. Actually, got to get out there and uh, trim them back because they're 30, 40 feet out over into the field, and that's the west, so it's blocking a lot of evening sun. And we got buffer strips in there, 20-foot buffer strips, but... Uh, they still shade everything out. That's like that fit there. We're gonna spread the last one. It's up on the side of that woods. I'm facing south right now, but the east side of that woods, we've got a 20 foot buffer strip there too. It's still nothing grows another 30 feet out. I need to 
need to cut the woods back. I need to put 20 feet on the other side of the little ditch there. Never a dull moment. There's always something to do. I can never say I'm bored and got nothing to do because it, it just don't happen. <laughs> I could work 20 hours a day for the rest of my life, I think, and still not get everything done that I want. Of course, a lot of it's playing around and stuff like that. Truck toys and this and that and everything else. You know, projects. All right, well, I'm going to finish this field. Maybe I'll hop back on here and give you a tour of that little bridge field when I get in there. Talk to you in a little bit. All right, I finished up with field number 27, back here number 26. Neat little field. Got woods on three sides here. Let me turn you around. See if I can do this. There we go. Yeah, it's a neat little field. White screen. White screen. There we go. I see I got some blowdowns I got to take care of. So maybe I'll get Dad over here at the bottom. Yeah, take care of that. Give him something to do. But uh, man, this ground is hard too and rough. But yeah, we just, the blossoms are coming out. There's another one of them oak trees right there. And uh, it's the same deal. They don't. They're no good for lumber. I don't know if they're. I'm not sure what kind they are. They're not a pin oak. But yeah, they just come out of come out of the ground and they go up about I don't know, 10 feet, 8 feet. Just start branching out. So. But yeah, that that has encroached into the field. The, the old concrete posts are probably 25 foot back in there. Just over the years, the thicket, we call that part of it the thicket. Good mushroom hunting around this area. So, uh, oh, turn, baby, turn. All right. There we go. So, yeah, this uh, woods on three sides and then a ditch. Uh, you probably can't see that, but there's a ditch that goes from the corner of that woods back to the corner of that woods. So this is, this feels all isolated. You got a rock on, this is west, and there's a lime plant, uh, three quarters of a mile that way. Actually where Dad retired from, big hole in the ground. So uh, you get in the west side of this field, and it gets kind of rocky. There's actually a little corner up there. Um, you can't see it. But the uh, northwest corner, we don't even farm about a 60 by 60 square up there because the rock's actually coming out of the ground. So, anyway, she lays wet back here along the woods, too. Need to cut that side back another 20 feet. So the sun can get down in there. There's a couple of tile in this one. Dad seems to think that there's more than that. One of these years I'll get the drone up here. I know there's tile on the other side, but they're every hundred foot. And they were they were dug by hand. My great uncle and my well it'll be my dad's. My dad's grandfather and my dad's uncle had this farm. And uh, they'd come out in the mornings when it was cool out. And they it was all dug by hand and laid in by hand, clay tile. Two spades deep, two spades wide. And they'd start here and work towards the, towards the road. Sugar Creek is uh, it's a pretty big creek over there in that woods to the east of here. And that's where they tile it to. But, yep. Them old boys knew how to work back then. All these, uh, all the fence posts around this, this property, they're, uh, they're concrete. And they're tapered. They're probably six 
by four at the bottom, and at the top they taper down to probably a four by three. And that's another thing that great grandpa would do. Every morning he'd go out and pour, he had two forms, and he would pour two fence bolts. He'd mix up the concrete and pour two fence bolts. It's got they they got fence in them, they got uh, old steel fence posts in them, they got sucker rods from the old oil wells in them, whatever they could, had to, to brace them, but he, he would go out and he'd pour two fence posts every morning before breakfast, and he'd do the chores, and then uh, they'd sit until the next morning, and then uh, he'd take them out, clean the forms out, do it again. Yeah, there's hundreds of them around there. There's actually a pile of them over in the corner of the woods there. If I think about it, I'll take you back there and show you. If I can find them. They're right out there. The old campgrounds is what we call that. Little, little cove. Let me show you. Ah, fingers in the way. Back in the corner of that woods, right in there, there's a nice little area that has gotten mowed off over the years. And there's a... There's a stack of them fence posts back here. So, uh, like I said, if I think about it, when I'm done with this field, I'll uh, take you back there and show you. All right, I think I got it. Yeah, we're recording. There's my ride. That scooter, a little 1090U uh, case, 90 horsepower. Slick little tractor, handy little tractor. We use that thing a lot. That's on the sprayer, spread fertilizer, a lot of things. But yeah, Here, let me turn you around. There we go. This is what we call the campgrounds. Little area. Got some logs laying here, pieces, stuff that blew down. But yeah, my uncle lived here. My dad's brother, he lived here. And uh, he kind of mowed this and cleared it out and uh, had a camper back here for I don't know a couple years but here's that stack of fence posts some of them are bigger like this one here that's a that's a different one that must have been a corner post there's a corner post there's a corner post but here's the rest of them and you can see they got wire in them they laid fence wire in them and uh, this would be the big end. There's my hand, so you know that's probably approximately nine inches. So they're five, five inches. And then uh, there's the uh, small end. But yeah, they, every morning he pour two of them. And I see we got some poison ivy growing up in between them, but. Yeah, those were, uh, every field had a fence around it, and uh, the lanes fenced both down, down both sides. The woods has a fence, or used to have a fence all the way around it. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a fence post right there. That's one of them concrete fence posts, and there's another one right there but yeah they go all the way around the property and then like i said every field had a fence around it and they would uh they turn the cattle out after the crops come off and cattle would they put the cattle and the sheep in the woods during the summer and uh and then they put them in the fields after the crops come off Feet. Yeah, the woods, I mean, you used to be able to walk through the woods. I remember it. Um, because the cattle laid everything up as high as they could reach. Probably a good, almost six foot. There was nothing on any of the trees. So it was all open underneath. Nice canopy. But, uh, I got just a teaspoon of fertilizer left back in there. So I'm going to jump back over into this field. I'm going to go over along the road over there. 
make a pass. Put a little extra fertilizer next to the road if you got any left. That way it looks make the corn look better from the road. <laughs> Talk to y'all later. Alright, well, change your plans again. That's how it is. I, uh, I give the guys at Archibald Equipment a call, well, Redline Equipment in Bowling Green. Because this little girl is Needs, the transmission needs calibrated. I don't know if I said something about that or not, but trying to get her to move in reverse is real jerky, and the high-low is starting to, to uh, act up a little bit, too. So, uh, on my big track, you can do it right from the console, but on this one, you have to have a special wiring harness that you plug in to the diagnostic port. So, I give them a call thinking we could do it, and they say you want to do it when it's hot and running. So, I've been running it all day so far, so she's been hot. So the guy at the tech just left Bowling Green, so I'm going to stop here at my house and park the tractor for a little bit, leave her run, and uh, get that vertical tail going and wait for him to show up. Hopefully, it'll take but about 20 minutes to recalibrate the transmission, and then we'll go from there. So we'll see what happens. Talk to you later. calibration on her twice little improvement not much started checking and there was an update for the servos and uh, bell body in the transmission so he went ahead and found the numbers and entered that all into his laptop and plugged her in and updated the, updated the servos and so far it seems like she's good as new so I'm heading over to Dad's. He's going to take over doing this. I'm going to get him started. He don't know how to program the GPS, so I'll get it in the field and get it started. And he can uh, he can take over, and I'm going home, going to bed. So, I hope everybody's staying safe. I hope everybody's not going too stir crazy. So uh, everybody, take care. I'll talk to you later. Bye.